How you going there? Talking about Legends is the K-Man here. Welcome to TKD Performance Tips, here to help you become better at talking to. And today we're going to focus on how to get more power into your movements during your patterns or your tools, or whether you're from karate into your kata, or whether you're from kung fu into your uh, forms. So how to get more power? And as you already know, all power comes from the hips. But what I see a lot of Taekwondo participants doing when they do their patterns or their tools, they don't use their hips. They're so focused on creating the shape of the end point of the movement, they forget about the process and how to develop, how to get to that, that position and how to develop power to execute, execute the block or the punch. For example, if they're doing a, a, a lower forearm block, they will focus on just getting there and everything will be very structured perfectly, but there's no actually energy or power in the movement. So they're so focused on just, and it becomes a bit of an arm movement of this blocking, rather than an execution of a technique that's going to be actually effective in blocking an attack or executing an attack from yourself to your opponent. So when you transition from one move to the other, I just want you to start focusing on Rather than winding it up through your shoulders, as you know, all the power comes from your hips, just like the base of a whip. All the power at the end of the whip comes from the base of the whip, which is the thickest part of the whip. This is the thickest part, so all power from, the, from here down will come from the hips, and from here up will come from the hips. So I'm going to ask you to start to be aware of using your hips when you're executing your blocks and your attacks. So if I'm moving forward, rather than saying I'm going to move forward with a lower forearm block, right, and, and that looks nice, that looks pretty, but it's pretty, but it's pretty ineffective as well. And it's pretty useless because there's no power in it. So when you go from one transition to the other, what I want you to do is just to move your hips. You don't have to overwind your shoulders, just move your hips through the movement and then and accelerate through the movement by getting that rotation of the hips. It doesn't have to be a massive hip movement. It just has to be a controlled hip movement with acceleration. I don't have to wind up the whip way back here. I just wind it up through the, through the wrist. So when I'm moving forward, I'm executing, say, a low forearm block, for example. I use my hips. I'm moving forward from here. Move forward. So I'm actually accelerating with that rotation and then my arm follows that rotation and all of this momentum, all of this force goes through a smaller limb that creates acceleration for the block or the punch. One way I look at it, and I was working with my uh, pattern uh, coach, Master Barter, the other day, and we were in front of the mirror we were saying, what you should look at is what happens to your belt when you do a technique. And what happens to the belt will give you an indication of how much power and acceleration is in the movement. Now I want you to have a look at my belt when I move forward doing a lower forearm block. And I do this, it'll look pretty, but without that hip movement. And what you'll see is there'll be minimal movement of my belt. My belt virtually stays down. Now I have a look at my belt when I move forward using my hips and see what happens to it at the execution of the block. So from here. See how it just sort of you know, went back and forth? So if there's power, you find that your belt will, will start to shake sideways because you get that hip movement. If I'm doing this, see the hip movement? If I'm just going forward, there's no actually move, movement of the belt side to side. So whether I'm doing a block this way or even a punch, I use my hip. Don't overdo it, don't overcook it, don't do it so much where your shoulders actually come to all the way back here, because you still want to keep in that natural position, but just start using that hip movement, and that will give you so much more power in your techniques. So from an execution and a practical point of view, it's going to be far more effective because now you're using your hips for power. From a visual point of view, from if you're in a competition or whether you're in a grading, you're going to stand out from the pretty practitioners because they'll be pretty but looking pretty useless. They look pretty 
doing pretty useless techniques, but you're going to look pretty amazing doing a technique that also looks very effective and very, very powerful. But remember, all your power comes from your hips. So rather than focusing on the end point, focus on the process that transition to the end point by making it effective and using those hips to get the power and they will be expressed through your block or through your punch. Use your hips like a whip and you'll be effective and you'll also look pretty and you won't be pretty useless looking pretty but useless in practicality. So you heard it here, go and practice, put some hip into it baby, hippy hippy shake. See you in the next TKD performance tips.